Anybody that has been FDM or extrusion based 3D printing is no stranger to a spool of filament. They come in a massive range of colors. Some of them are chopped with other additives to give them unique looks or unique properties. And there's really a lot of options out there depending on what your specific use case is. With all these differences, there is one thing that they share in common and that's that they are thermoplastics. Thermoplastics are a form of plastic that are moldable at a certain temperature and they solidify when they are cooled. And it's this characteristic that makes them perfect for 3D printing. However, it's during these heating and cooling cycles that these materials will expand and then contract with some of them doing it more than others. And it's a huge contributor to warping, which is something that anybody that 3D prints is familiar with. Today we're gonna to be using the Fleur Cam that I recently picked up to see if we're actually able to visualize the shrinking and warping happening with a printed part. After that, we'll take a look at draft shields, apply them to our part and print again to see what sort of effect they have on its ability to retain heat. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Although the materials we print with are thermoplastics, they all have their own varying degrees of shrinkage, which we can see by taking a look at this chart I found for various injection molding plastics. The exact shrinkage amount can vary greatly based on a handful of factors, including processing method. So this is more for example's sake than exact percentages. ABS has a higher shrinkage rate than PLA, which is one of the reasons it's recommended to print inside of an enclosure. Doing so will allow it to maintain a more uniform heat and have it shrink together versus having it cool section by section as the hot end gets further and further away, which can cause things like splintering or warping. Due to this, I would never recommend printing ABS without an enclosure, but that's exactly what we're going to do today. For my testing, I started off with a motor mount that I had downloaded for the Voron switch wire that I am currently building, and all the parts are printed out in build series ABS on the Aquila S2. I went with 105 Celsius on the bed and 255 Celsius on the hot end. The 255 Celsius on the hot end is a bit warmer than I would typically print ABS, and I only decided to go a little bit warmer because again, we are not using an enclosure. While the part was printing, I checked on it a couple of times and I plugged in the IR camera to get some videos as well as some photos. And one thing that I found that was really interesting was just how hot the base of the part was butting up against the bed. Now, I expected it to be fairly warm, but it was as warm as filament that had just been extruded out of the nozzle just a few moments ago. And the parts ended up having a bit of elephant's foot on them. And you can see the heat that is contributing to that elephant's foot by looking through the camera, which is something that I wasn't expecting to see and I just thought was pretty interesting. As for the part itself, other than that glowing base, the temperature throughout it was fairly uniform while it was printing, which I believe is due to the fact that the part was not very tall and that would also explain why in the past I've been able to print some small parts in ABS or ASA that are fairly flat without having an enclosure. It is worth noting the place that the printer is in is fairly tight and the temperature throughout this condo has been in the mid to even upper 70s. So it is fairly warm, which is also not hurting its ability to maintain that heat. After the part was printed, I was ready to apply a draft shield. So let's hop over to Kira and take a quick look at those. Draft shields are not visible by default. So we'll need to head over to the hamburger menu in the print settings toolbar and go to manage setting visibility. In the search bar, if you type the word draft, you'll see draft shields and a few other settings that we'll want to enable. After we close out of the menu, if we scroll down to experimental in the print settings, we'll now see draft shields. But what is a draft shield? Cura describes them as a wall around your model that traps hot air in and shields from external airflow. If you're familiar with skirts, picture a skirt, but one that goes up much higher than just the first layer. I then re-sliced the same model with the exact same settings, but I enabled the draft shield. I went with a default 10 millimeter XY distance and full for the draft shield limitation, which means it will build the wall all the way up to the top of the model. Similar to the first print, as it went down, I watched it quite a few times and then plugged in the IR camera to take some photos and videos. And during the printing process, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary and it looked pretty much just like the first print. That was until I took it over to the computer and put the photos side by side. With the two photos side by side, I could see the impact that the draft shield had. Having the thermal camera set to the exact same range for all the prints 
The parts in the draft shield stayed much warmer throughout the entire print, which was pretty impressive to me. Looking at the draft shield, you can see it's doing exactly what it's supposed to, as the outside of it is cooler, keeping some of the draft away from the part, and the heated part is able to maintain some additional heat. After those first two prints, I ran a series of additional prints, but I took a small fan and I put it on low, pointing towards the printer. My goal with that was to see if having that airflow, we would be able to see any sort of temperature changes in the ABS with or without the draft shield using the IR camera, but I really didn't see much of anything. Thing. And I think that part of that is attributed to that it is again in the mid to upper 70s in here. So it is fairly warm and it just didn't have a whole lot of effect on the print. So I decided to sort of scale everything up and see what would happen. I took that fan put it on high and I put it one foot away roughly from the printer. I then opened the window that's next to the room here and at nighttime it's been much cooler so there was some cool air coming through. On top of that I took a 20 millimeter test cube and I stretched it to be 40 millimeters tall in hopes that we'd be able to see some of the difference in temperature from the bottom to the top of the part and maybe a little bit of deviation in, in between that as well. Once the cube got to about 30 millimeters in height, I was able to notice some temperature difference within the cube. And although I didn't notice any warping when the part was printing or when I took it off, there was a pretty big bulge around the 15 millimeter mark. I then went ahead and printed the exact same cube with all the same settings, but a draft shield. And it was pretty hard to get a shot with the IR camera just because of the shield all around it. But again, taking them side by side, I can definitely see that the cube stayed much warmer. And when I put them side by side, I can see a slight, slight bulge maybe around the 15 millimeter mark, but it is very, very minimal compared to the part that did not have the draft shield at all. Prior to playing around these draft shields over the past week or so here, I had known of them for quite a long time, but I wasn't really convinced they did much. I still 100% believe that ABS should just about always be printed inside of an enclosure. And my goal of this video was certainly not to fight a case against that because all we've done here is look as far as the visual properties go for these parts, but we haven't checked to see how they compare in terms of strength versus a part that was an enclosure. And I have no doubt that you will get much better inner layer adhesion, whether visually or not, by using an enclosure. However, I do think that there are some unique cases where maybe a draft shield could be beneficial, even for materials like PETG, which typically don't need an enclosure. As mentioned, I print in a fairly temperature controlled environment where there's just not a lot of traffic or changes in temperature more than a couple degrees, but I know that's not the case for everybody. I've talked to quite a few people that 3D print in their garage and they've got snow, they've got much cooler conditions than we get here, or 3D printers that are in a much more open location where there are things like AC units hitting it or there are people walking by creating some sort of draft. Based on what I'm seeing, I do think that someone in a situation like that could potentially benefit from using something like a draft shield. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I, I don't feel that draft shields are something that are super commonly used, but if anybody does or has used them, let me know what your thoughts or what your feedback has been by using them and if they've helped you out. I hope that you enjoyed this video and my goal with getting the thermal camera was to be able to do some testing on my own as well as some troubleshooting and hopefully make it a little bit easier to visualize some of the things that we discuss on this channel. Also, if there's something specific you would like to see tested out using this camera, let me know in the comments down below. I definitely have some ideas of my own, but I always love hearing your thoughts. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Deanna from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.